Gemini, this is your week ahead astrology forecast from Astrology Motivation by Born Without Boundaries. Welcome, my name is Michelle, and in this video, we're going to go over the major planetary aspects and transits in relation to your natal sun and how they're going to impact your day to day this week. This is from the week of, this is the week of May 4th to the 10th, 2023. If you see me looking down, it's because I'm reading off my notes, guys. I've collected it all here for you. We're going to start really broad with the stuff that's going to impact everybody. And then we're going to, we're going to sort of focus down into the, the stuff that Gemini should be focusing on in particular. And then we'll get down into how these things are impacting your natal suns. So if your natal sun is somewhere between 0 and 9 degrees Gemini, you guys are Gemini 1s. If your natal sun is somewhere between um, 10 and 19 degrees Gemini, you are Gemini 2s, and if your natal sun is somewhere between um, 20 and 29 degrees Gemini, you are Gemini 3s. What is this 1, 2, 3? They are decans. A decan is a group of 10 degrees, and every single zodiac sign has a total of 30 degrees, which means they have three groups of 10, three decans. The reason why we divide it is because, divide it into these sections, is because in astrology, it's not really an aspect unless it's within 10 degrees of a certain angle. Everything, astrology is based on geometry. That's how we deduce the relationships between situations, between planets, and the energies that they generate. So. The angles are really important, and if it's within 5 to 10 degrees of each other, it'll have a significant impact. But anything above or beyond that, beyond that is totally different. So Gemini 1s and Gemini 2s and Gemini 3s are going to be experiencing, may not be experiencing the same energies at all, or be experiencing them in a very different way. So it's important to know where your natal sun is. Don't worry if you don't have that information. I will give you the correlating dates, but they are estimates, right? The real accurate way is to get your natal chart, and that's very easy. You can search free natal chart, and a bunch of websites come up. You'll need your birth date, which you already have, your birth time, and your birth place, all of which are on your birth certificate. You plug that information in, and it'll spit out a full chart for you and you'll be able to see where your sun is and where everything is so let's start with the broad stuff mercury is still in retrograde and it will be in retrograde for another uh, week and a half from now um we have a full moon in scorpio that's happening on may 5th it is a lunar eclipse we won't be able to see it here in the states but we will still feel the impact we are definitely in eclipse season lunar eclipses have to do with changes in emotions how you feel about things or the state of your insides like there's a sense of of big purges extreme purges that will happen during lunar eclipses especially in scorpio this is the toxic stuff that has been hidden buried shamed or not people don't want to talk about but it's going to be brought to light by information coming back into full view and focus understanding basically how to get rid of it and how to expel it because the sun uh, is always in direct opposition to a full moon. That's how full moons happen. But the sun is conjunct Uranus and conjunct Mercury retrograde in Taurus while all of this is happening. Can you say, aha, especially when it comes to finances or something with value or something very sensual or sensual pleasures. So there is definitely some information out there that is going to be discovered or finally realized that is going to help us purge some sort of toxin, release it and let it go. This is a big energy this week. 
We have Jupiter <laughs> in addition to the big energy this week. We have Venus making a transit from Gemini. So she's, she's with you guys right now, but she's moving into Cancer. So that will happen, I believe, on the 7th of this week. Meanwhile, Venus, Saturn, and the South Node are all forming a grand trine. So this is a really traditional value system, traditional love, and financials done the traditional way. Maybe feeling a little bit too cozy and comfy for the rest of the climate. I'm not really sure. But we have Jupiter square to Pluto as well. And that's actually going to go right through next week. This is combustible energy because Pluto is also going to be in opposition to Mars. It's like Roto-Rooter, guys. So it's, it's, it's like there's nothing that it's like it's it's like it's so compacted and so stuck it's about to blow up and explode it's just going to push the clog in the drain out even if it has to destroy the drain so just be very aware of this energy this week now let's go into what is impacting specifically gemini's you guys always have to be aware of where mercury is because mercury moves almost not as fast as, uh, actually, I think Mercury moves faster than the, than, the, than the sun. I think it only stays about three weeks in each sign. So it's going to impact where your focus is. You know, if when it's in Cancer, your focus is your family. When it's in Gemini, your focus is with your friends or with your education. It's going to impact, like, what, what mindedness you have at that time. So it's good to know where Mercury is. Now we know that Mercury is in Taurus and it's going to transit not between, because it's in retrograde, so it's moving backwards. It's going to transit between nine and six degrees Taurus. So it's in the first decan of Taurus. Um, it is conjunct the north node and opposite to the south node at this point. It is sextile to Venus and sextile to Saturn. So it is really working out. There's opportunities here that I think we have to rediscover. We have to rediscover so that things can be rebalanced and, and balance, them, balance themselves out. And we have to go over things go through things a little bit, especially in financial systems, laws, rules, and regulations. Um, but let's talk about how this energy impacts you. So in Gemini, the zodiac sign of Gemini, you have Venus only through the seventh of this week. So that's um, by, by the weekend. Uh, Gemini is going to be shifting into Cancer. And then Gemini will be sort of wide open. It doesn't mean that your natal suns aren't being impacted. So Gemini ones, and this would be Gemini birthdays, definitely May Geminis, um, definitely Taurus Gemini cusps, maybe up through the 29th of May. Um, your natal suns are long-term, square to Saturn, sextile to Neptune and trine to Pluto. This is real visionary shit. Like this is this is you seeing kind of into the future or knowing what has like what is possible, seeing possibility. And trine with Pluto means you're a part of a bigger plan. So it really is you guys are a little bit of the visionaries. You're going to of course rub up against that Saturnian energy this year. It's going to be a little extra hard for you because maybe you've got contracts to settle, obligations from the past, or just people giving you a hard time and not getting or understanding what you're trying to say. But that will pass, and then there will be a big break next year that trying to Pluto will really come in full effect when Pluto settles down nicely into Aquarius where it's almost like uh, you'll get the crowd approval. That's all I'm trying to say. I don't want to predict too far into the future, but let's, I'm trying to say, this, this week, um, your natal suns are sextile to Mars, which means uh, more vitality, more energy, more stamina, maybe even a little bit more horniness. Uh, it's definitely a time to be more physical and use that energy in a productive way. Um, yeah, and you'll have time to use that stamp. Like, uh, it, it's like it'll open up, It'll, it'll open up opportunities for you. It'll actually make you feel a lot better. Um, 
You also are in quincunx to the south node, so there are definitely issues from your past that are holding you back, and we're probably seeing that with the square to Saturn manifesting in, you know, just contracts from the past or laws, rules, and regulations shifting, and you're not able to keep up with them. So expect that those entanglements to be happening basically all all this year because Saturn will be in the first decade of Pisces all this year I don't think it'll slow you down I don't think it'll give you insight into just how crazy and wacky shit is and why it needs to change which is what you're positioned to do to be honest with you um, but this week it's really just that uh, sextile to Mars that's giving you added vitality and physicality um, we have Gemini 2's coming up here you guys are sextile to Chiron, and your natal sons have been that for a while. That means finding inspiration and motivation to heal and help, and also opportunities to cure past hurts and past suffering, especially past ailments with the physical self, because Chiron is in Aries. That is long term, and that'll, that'll, you guys will be experiencing that real blessing and healing for the next couple of years. Um, and then we have another longer term, no, 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 this, this, this week, um, your quincunx to the full moon in Scorpio. What does that mean? It means it's gonna be frustrating that all this popping, all, all this energy that's being purged and coming out, it's gonna really fucking irritate you. Maybe because you, you had said it for so long or you had seen it for so long or because people didn't believe you when you initially tried to tell, like stuff like that, it's going to be very frustrating. There is a purge that is happening, maybe stuff coming out that you didn't wanna come out or emotions being exposed that, are uncomfortable for you that could happen as well so just be aware that's the fourth fifth and sixth of this week that that's going to be impacting you um, then we have Gemini threes Gemini threes um, long-term transits are square to Neptune and trine to Saturn and quincunx to Pluto um, what does that mean that means that you could be very, very distracted, but Neptune has been that way for a while, I gotta tell you. Um, now, Neptune, you're conjunct to Venus. So this week, your natal suns are conjunct to Venus, especially if you're on the cusp of Cancer. So you guys are gonna be square. You're already square to Neptune. You've been dealing with that for a while, kind of foggy-brained, a little bit more mushy, more inclined to be distracted and distractible, and for people that easily take advantage of you. Conjunct to Venus just means that this could be playing out right now in your romantic and financial situations. So take extra special care or get a good friend to look over and review because you any any anything, especially like contracts and stuff like that, or listen to your friend's opinion when they tell you, I don't really like that person that you're dating, essentially, or your hair doesn't, you know, you might want to try a different style. Like there's just a sense of get an opinion from somebody that you trust because all of those sensibilities are going to come up and you could easily be kind of hoodwinked or bamboozled through them. Just an FYI. Um, or by somebody playing on your vanity. Just, just be aware of that this week. Um, and then if you're on the very cusp of Gemini 3, so you're on the Cancer uh, cusp, you guys are trying to the south node. Um, okay, so trying to the south node is harmony with the past, harmony with... Um, Harmony with your sense of self and where you've come from, basically feeling like like making peace with your past and being able to be in a position where you can kiss it goodbye and move forward. That kind of energy, um, knowing yourself, knowing your worth, that also means that you are sextile to the North Node and Jupiter is conjunct the North Node. So there are so many opportunities that are expanding and broadening for you now in the future and you're future focused because you know what you're good at and where you come from 
of what you've been through. It's made you stronger. So let me know in the comments below how this energy is impacting you. Please subscribe to the channel and like this video and definitely come across to Born Without Boundaries tar Tarot for your week ahead tarot card reading. I love you guys so much and I will talk to you next week.